All right. Well, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on trans tasting transformations of parent functions. I'm going to provide two more examples on how to do this. Um, and uh, hopefully this will help out those that maybe are struggling on how to identify transformation and also how to graph them. Um, this might be a little bit better examples because I'm using actually a whole entire board this time instead of cramming everything into one slide. So we'll see. First off, whenever we try to identify transformations, once again, we always identify the parent function first. So given this equation, we need to identify the parent function. So the parent function in this case, hopefully it's if you take away all the transformations, all the negatives, all the adding of different numbers, we come up with the equation of the absolute value of x. This is the parent function um, of the absolute value, which we call the flying v because it looks like a, a v, like so. And that's what that common function looks like, that parent function. Now, from here, we're going to identify the different types of transformations. Now, to do that, we're going to look at both the horizontal and the vertical transformations. Horizontal messes with the x, and the horizontal or sorry, vertical messes with the y values, or changes the y values of all the points on this parent function. So, first off, horizontal. Our horizontal changes are inside our input. Okay, They're inside the input, which is right there. This is where we refine all of our horizontal changes. The horizontal changes, which are located here, we see that we're adding, or subtracting 5 from x. Now, when we have a subtraction of 5, that means I need to plug in, actually, a 5 to get back to my original point of 0, 0, right, on my parent function. Because I have to add 5, this is actually a horizontal shift, shift to the right, five units. Okay? So horizontal shift to the right five units. So all my x values I have, I'm adding five to get back to the original. Well, that appears to be my only horizontal. The other ones are my outside, all right? So whatever's outside of the absolute value function, and in this case I have a negative sign, so that will be a vertical shift, and on the outside I'm adding two to the absolute value, or my outputs would be, that will be another vertical. So from here, I have two different vertical um, transformations that are occurring. I always take the one, the multiple first. So in this case, I have my negative. Negatives, once again, always mean reflections. And the reflection, since it's on the outside, I'm reflecting the outputs, the outputs which are the y's. Outputs, outside, y values, so it's a reflection of my y's. So whatever my, if I have positive, and it appears that all my values are positive, that means all my y values will now go to the opposite, which will make them negative. That type of reflection of the y's is a reflection over the x-axis. And so we have our first transformation, which is a reflection over the x-axis. The second transformation is we're adding 2. We're adding 2 to every single one of my y values. So after I do my first vertical transformation, and I look at my second one, because I'm going to be adding to all those values 2. So that's going to do a vertical shift, and it's going to go up 2, because I'm adding 2 to all my y values. So when we draw this new transform graph, I'm going to just take one of my basic common points, because we're always moving the points. I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to move it all right, up to, or actually we're first going to reflect it, so my values are reflected. We're going to shift it to the right five, so one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to take it and move it up to one, two, and we know that they're going to be reflected, all right, like so, over the x-axis, and that's what we have right there, okay? So that would be our graph. You can put that in our calculators and figure that out, see that, but that's what our new transformed um, parent function would be. Let's try another one. In our fourth example, what we have is um, negative square root of x plus 2 minus 3. Well, in here, I'm going to identify my parent function. My parent function, hopefully you identify, is the square root of x, which we call is the, well, I call the little teapot function. It has an initial point right here. Um, 1, 1 is another point, and it goes up like so. All right, and it keeps on increasing because you're taking the square roots of all the values you plug in can't plug in any negative values because that would be imaginary and that just would be crazy. So we're not going to do that. But now, from here, what is happening to this square root of x parent function? Well, let's identify the different transformations. We have horizontal and vertical. 
So we look at the inside. So this is our horizontal. All right, and that's right there. And so we see, okay, well, it looks like we're adding two to that. Well, since we're adding two, we know we have a horizontal shift. And this horizontal shift, we're going to be moving everything to the left, two units. It's moving to the left because I need to subtract two, all right, in order to get back to my original value of zero. Since I have to subtract two to get to my original value of zero, when I plug in negative two, I get back to zero. Um, that's how I know it's moving to the left. So that's plug in a negative. Okay, it's the opposite. That appears to be my only horizontal um, change. So now I go once again, look at my vertical, and I look to see, and I say, like this one example three, I see another negative. All right, it's a multiplier, so that's my first transformation. I have another one, which is my second transformation, and what I have is, okay, that negative is a reflection over the x-axis, and I also am going to be moving down three. Okay, a vertical shift down three. So, how do I graph this? Well, if I graph this, I'm going to go and move it to the left, all these points. So, left two, so one, two, and I'm going to reflect them and then move them down three, so one, two, three, and I have this, and it's going to look like reflection, like so. Reflect it over the x axis, moved to the left two and down three. And that's what we have our, for our new parent function. I hope that makes sense, and I hope that helps. And good luck with the rest remaining transformations of common function.